Good day, my paper presentation is entitled as An Appraisal of the Filipino Catholic Devotion to the Black Nazarene in the Light of New Evangelization. This is the outline of my presentation. I will limit my presentation to the most critical topic. First, introduction. Second, significance of the Black Nazarene devotion to new evangelization in the Philippine context. Third, new evangelization and popular devotions. And lastly, insights, recommendations, and conclusion. I may not be able to tackle everything, but rest assured that I will provide the most important topics in my paper. So this paper focuses on the devotion to the Black Nazarene in the light of the new evangelization, and it aims to answer the following questions. What is the Black Nazarene devotion? What are the historical and sociological aspects of the Black Nazarene? What are the teachings of the Catholic Church regarding popular devotions? How does the Black Nazarene devotion serve as a means that contributes to the new evangelization among Filipino Catholics? What is good about popular devotions? And what are the negative practices or beliefs that need to be clarified? And lastly, what are the recommendations to the people regarding the devotion? Historically, okay, so most Filipino devotees do not concern much about its origin or history, but they only focus on their hope that their petitions may be granted. They may be helped in their struggles in life and witness miracles. Other devotees consider practices to be a way for them to share his passion and offer their lives for him. So this devotion could always be why every day, especially during its feast day, is plucked by thousands or millions of people. So historical aspects of the Black Nazarene. It was known as sculpted by a Mexican sculpture transported to Manila on May 31, 1606 during the Spanish period by the first group of the Order of Augustinian Recollects, first kept in the Bagunbayan Church, which is now Rizal Park, and transferred again to a bigger church in, of the Augustinians in Intramuros in 1608. And then the image was transferred again in the Quiapo Church under the patronage of St. John the Baptist, and it obtained pap papal approval from Pope Innocent the 10th on April 20, 1650. And it has survived many crises like fire, you know, earthquakes, and even World War II bombing. On the sociological aspect of the Black Nazarene, sociologist Clifford Sorita said in his article, Understanding the Devotion of the Black Nazarene, that the devotion comes from a deep-rooted personal experience with a divine whereby a pilgrim undergoes a direct experience of the sacred, either in the material aspect of miraculous healing and acquisition of various temporal needs, or in the immaterial aspect of the inward transformation of his spirit and personality. So it is a personal and communitarian religious experience. One is immersed with his or her faith, trying to express it by exp participating in different activities and practices. So there is a desire and spirit to follow Christ, share in his passion, and feel the pain he endured. On the religious piety of the Filipinos, here is a list of church documents that tackled religious piety due to lack of time. I will not read the statements anymore, but you can check them later as I provided their corresponding numbers. So we have the Catechism for Filipino Catholic, number 1469, uh, Pope John Paul II in his Apostolic Exhortation, Ecclesia in America, number 81, on the Vatican II documents, the Constitution on Sacred Liturgy, number 13 and 37, Directory on Popular Piety and Liturgy, number 11, and Catechism of the Catholic Church, numbers 1679, 1677 to 1679. Now, let us go on the second part, the significance of the Black Nazarene devotion to new evangelization in the Philippine context. So, for the upcoming celebration of 500 years presence of Catholic faith in the Philippines, the Black Nazarene has always considered a gift to Filipinos in strengthening their faith and closeness to God. 
having been inculturated in the Filipino Catholic lives, the Catholic faith always finds its place in the hearts and minds of devotees. The Black Nazarene became already a part of the lives of the faithful, renewing them from their faith and purifying them from their doubts, trials, and daily Christian lives. So Pope Francis acknowledged the importance of such devotion in the process of inculturation and evangelization of faith in the culture of a community. So here I put a particular statement of Pope Francis in his apostolic exhortation on the proclamation of the gospel in today's world, Evangelii Gaudium, number 122. Another, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines stated also, you see in this Jesus, one who can identify with us in our poverty, sufferings, and oppression, one who can reach out to us as a forgiving and healing Savior in our weaknesses and failings. So devotees of the Black Nazarene are usually the poor, those suffering from different kinds of sickness and those answered in their prayers. The common people or the poor and usually men shared their sorrows with Christ carrying the cross. The devotion to the Black Nazarene is different because it is Jesus Christ himself whom the devotee adores. People are kept on coming, coming back because of their faith, giving thanks to him and expressing their gratitude to God by their passion for the devotion. So they believe that because of their devotion, their petitions were granted. In exchange for it, they wanted to repay by participating and attending annually to the feast day and special occasions of the Black Nazarene. Now we have this kind of reminder. It is also a challenge to the devotees that even after the experience, their faith information must continue in their ordinary lives, or else it will just become a mere fanaticism. Third, new evangelization and popular devotions. Among the new ways of approaching the faith is through popular devotions, flourishing within particular areas. The Black Nazarene contributes to the newness of the gospel and unique way of evangelization. As for the Black Nazarene, Jesus consistently portrays a ray of hope for faithful to be converted from their sins. Always invites the believer to follow God's will as he fulfilled it by his very death on the cross. Black Nazarene, an image of Jesus carrying the cross, journeying to the Calvary, fulfilling God's will to save us from our sins, is always inviting us to follow him on the way. Just as like the statement of Pope Francis in Evangelii Gaudium number 11. So evangelization is a call for conversion. Devotion to the Black Nazarene is a call for faithful to conversion. Continuous renewal of faith, repentance from sin, and living out Christian values with the example of Jesus' actions. Jesus' actions. A devotee should not remain to evangelize by attraction, which means participating in different activities of the Black Nazarene without understanding them and without total change of heart. So during the feast day of the Black Nazarene, many are joining and yet the question is how many of among them understand what they are doing? A lot of people attend and how will rem remain to evangelize fully? So that means they will carry out the invitation of conversion in their daily lives. Now we are in the last part of the presentation. Insights, Recommendations, and Conclusion So during the feast day of the Black Nazarene, many people are joining yet. The question is how many among them understand what they are doing. So a lot of people attend and yet how many will remain to evangelize fully? So these are the following questions that we will answer throughout the last part of the presentation. So insights. In the light of the new evangelization, there are prevailing problems regarding devotions in general and the Black Nazarene that challenge the ministers and the pastoral leaders. So there is always a need for renewal and purification to avoid confusion and conflicts with faith. So popular devotions are loved by much 
loved much by the people and readily appreciated because of their lively component that could easily be adapted more than liturgy. So what happens? Liturgy seems to be so far and unattractive to an ordinary people looking for consolation. There will become an imbalance between the practice of a particular devotion and the liturgy. And sometimes, uh, the devotion becomes more important to uh, to the people or to the to the faithful rather than the liturgy. So others faithfully attend the special practices and festiv uh, festivals allotted to the devotion rather than the liturgy itself. So overemphasizing the devotion leads the faithful into some misconceptions of their image of God as there a pro as there is a promise attached to the devotion. So the person fulfills the ritual and practice to gain favor on God. So I do this, I do that, I do something so that God will give me. So iyon yung uh, nanyayari na nagiging condition ng tao. Okay, so that is becoming the condition of the person. Another, having enough education is the best solution to the problem. So for some faithful, they follow devotions uh, without having a grounded knowledge about the practices. So problems or dangers arise when there is already an overemphasis and attention to the devotion rather than the liturgy itself. So when there is no real transformation in their lives. As Father Ber Bernhard Ras, uh, SVD said, uh, they can be one-sided and as such, they can cause people to develop false priorities and values. And there is always a danger of too much uh, subjectivism, externalism, and sentimentalism. So popular devotions uh, can give a wrong feeling of security in the presence of a living God. So there is a danger that popular devotions easily degenerate into magical or superstitious practices or even idolatry. So popular devotions can be abused for other purposes like moralizing or didactic. Uh, intentions. So learning from its history and earlier practices will give the faithful a stronger conviction of their devotions. So giving the devotees ample time to catechize them, uh, explaining the basic teachings of faith, uh, liturgy, basic concepts of God's images, devotion, incorporating them in their sermons, recollections, talks, etc. So what are the obligations that we have? So it should all begin with the ministers and pastoral leaders taking care of the images, just like in the Black Nazarene, and other priests and catechists. Evangelization should start with the leaders. So pastoral leaders should carefully watch and analyze some practices given more priority than the liturgy and study the best action they should take. So devotees should always be advised and reminded to avoid any excessive practices and expressions that would harm themselves and are not demanded by anyone. Different gestures and observations equipped with understanding and background knowledge are exemplary. St. Paul, St. John Paul II said, We cannot preach conversion unless we are converted anew every day. So evangelization through devotion must always lead the faithful to conversion which should happen first among the leaders. So the Black Nazarene is a kind of Christology, uh, unifying the Christology from below and above. There should always be a balance of the two, a Christ who does not remain crucified, but also brings hope to everyone for their resurrection. And in the end, having basic catechisms and knowledge of the devotion and liturgy should always remind what the proper practices of the devotions are, and avoid excesses. Now, for my conclusion, the Black Nazarene is a powerful image of God who is in solidarity with the poor in their poverty and suffering, and at the same God who gives them hope that someday their poverty and suffering will end. Conversion, commitment, and renewal to the life of Jesus must always be the end of the devotion. Without transformation, the devotion will remain an external activity leading to fanaticism, externalism, and sentimentalism 
then the faithful are just evangelized by attraction. Okay, so we are not uh, only evangelized, or we should not only evangelize by attraction, but also be converted with the fullness of our understanding and faith. So thank you so much. I am Joseph Albert Reyes. Thank you so much.